What is up everybody, it's Larry from 5031 Media, and today I wanna to talk to you about a video that I released just a few days ago. Not only is it the first wedding film that I've ever done, but it was also shot completely by myself. Now that's not ideal, but I think I can give you a few tips and tricks to let you know how I was able to manage it and some troubles that I had during the shoot. First of all, here's a couple tips that I learned while researching uh, you know, how to do a wedding film, doing it on your own. I was deep dived into research. First off, no matter if you're working by yourself or not, you wanna get in contact with the photographer that you'll be working with on that day. It's a very intricate relationship. You could butt heads with that person because you're both sort of jostling for almost the same shots around the same time. Get that off on a good start. Contact them ahead of time. Reach out to them via their website or if you can get the information from the wedding planner or the the bride or groom however you can get a hold of them try to talk to them maybe meet up with them in advance and let them know what you're planning on doing you guys can trade notes so i reached out to the photographer didn't get any kind of feedback until the day i met them at the wedding so that's not ideal it ended up working out pretty well it was a wife and husband team the thing with this with this particular shoot is i stayed out of their way and again, I'll get into more of that in the next video when I talk about why that is. I worked my whole shooting schedule and everything that I wanted to do around what the photographer was doing. So as you can tell in some of the video clips, I'm sort of behind the photographer. I used my 70 to 200 to stay a little bit farther back so I wasn't interrupting. Um, but I was trying to get those in-between candid scenes, not the wedding photography pictures. I wanted to get the candid in-betweens. I was able to get a lot of shots of the bride looking at her new husband. Husband. I caught that in the edit and I remember showing my wife being like look at how she looks at him here here and here other people on Facebook once we posted it friends of the bride and groom actually caught the same things because I put those looks into the final edit another tip is to try to be as candid as you can while you're taking your video. There's going to be times that I'm gonna have someone, okay, I need you to walk in this area here, or I need you to move over to here. That's fine, but I don't ever wanna get the, all right, now I want you both to walk and then sort of, you know, this and that, but you can set that up, but then try to maybe break it a little bit. Like, hey, come walking towards me, looking at each other, and then, you know, maybe crack a joke or something, but like, you know, to sort of lighten the mood, to get them to laugh realistically. So little things like that can sort of break the mood and you get a, a more realistic smile and reaction. Another thing is you wanna reach out to the DJ. Just like with the photographer, you're gonna be working with the DJ quite a bit. It didn't work out for me this time around because I had a way, I was connected to the DJ's board, but his, his feed, it looked like he was using some lower end microphones and the feed was just really, really really bad so I ended up having a couple microphones all over the place which I'll get to in a second but yeah so so get with them introduce yourself again I, I reached out to them they reached out to me uh, they got back to me within a couple days which was only a couple days before the the wedding but I just said hey is it okay if I hook up to your board I'll have everything I need and he's like yeah no problem getting back to the microphone thing Another tip I would give you, because that was my most nerve-wracking thing, was the audio. Video, I know I can get. I can I can get all kinds of video, but audio is one that's, you just, I don't have a sound person constantly monitoring. So it's one of those things. So for the ceremony, I had a stationary camera in the very back. Groom was mic'd up, and then that's the audio that I pretty much used. But on top of that, I was hooked up to the DJ, who had a microphone on the pastor, that I also had my Zoom H5 sort of underneath where the ceremony was happening, just in case I could get that. If I needed it, I had that as well. Use the, the lapel mic from the groom, which is my Sennheiser AVX system. So that worked out really well. The groom sounded great, the pastor sounded great, the bride was a little low, just because she's soft-spoken. So in the future, I may wanna get a microphone that I can mic up the bride as well. I'd say 99% of what I shot for the beginning of the film, all slow motion, 120 frames per second with the 1DX Mark II. There's no sound for that. And then flipping to the, to the reception, I shot all that 24 frames per second. And I also had the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on top of the, the camera, the Zoom H5 set up by the speakers of the DJ, as well as the Tascam connected to the DJ's board which again did not work i didn't use much audio from the reception except for the toasts and that was a, a separate video i did again i did special moments which was the first look the full first look with the father 
Uh, the first look with the groom, which actually she didn't do a first look. It was the the uh, best man in his wife's dress, which was it was actually really funny. And then just a, a few things, the toast and all that was in a separate uh, video. So when it comes to audio, I would say more, more, more. Redundancy on top of redundancy is gonna be your best friend. Some, some issues that I had uh, was one, like I said, I was sort of following whatever the photographer wanted to do. Now, if I was being paid to do this, I would get with the photographer and say, look, I'm gonna need them to do this. You're gonna need them to do this. Let's meet somewhere in the middle and you know, you can get your stuff real quick. I can get my stuff or I can get my stuff. You can get your stuff. But a lot of my shots that I found, I had the photographer right there in the way and there wasn't much I could do about that. So like I said, if the couple is paying me, then I'm sure they're gonna want me to make sure that the photographer is not in the shots and we gotta work together. The other issue, one of the main issues that I had, the photographers actually had LED constant lights on top of their cameras going full blast. So I would set up for a shot and have you know my ISO, everything set up, everything looking good for say like the first dance. All of a sudden the photographers would come by and they'd pull their camera up and all of a sudden the bride and groom are white and washed out. That made it very, very difficult to shoot video, which would be another good thing that if I had talked to the photographer in advance, maybe they would have let me know. I don't think I would have known to ask that question because any wedding I've been to and seen uh, photography, it's always flash photography. I've never seen them use like a video light on top of their camera before ever so that was very very difficult but I was able to sort of edit around that um, and, and in some color correction to try to bring it down the best I possibly could if you haven't seen the video um, I've been playing clips for it as you know during as we've been talking but I'll leave a link for it down below or it's up in a card and in the final product like I said there was the main wedding film which I have linked down below I have the special moments the full wedding ceremony just sort of a raw you know non-stop feed I have the funny moments, and then I have the highlight clip that I posted like the next day after I shot the wedding. Uh, that was up on my Instagram. Anyways, that's gonna be it. I hope I brought you guys a little bit of information for shooting wedding films, especially shooting them on your own. Obviously, a couple cameras is another big tip. There's other stuff that I'll go into as time goes on. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you can hit the thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, you can subscribe down below. Hit the little bell so you guys are notified as soon as a video goes live. And that's going to be it. If you guys have any questions about anything, hit me down in the comment section below. Other than that, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.